Each light contains mercury and an environmental problem when disposed of. How green is green? Some four-cylinder cars are just as or even more environmentally friendly than hybrid cars. Calculating the cost of good intentions. That's next on The Agenda. And joining us now on the debate, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Lester Lave, professor at Carnegie Mellon University. In Vancouver, B.C., Hadi Dalatabadi, professor at University of British Columbia. And here in studio, Heather McLean, a professor from the University of Toronto, Clarissa Morosky with the CM Consulting Group, and Usman Valiente of Corporate Policy Group. It's good to have all of you here in Toronto, plus in points beyond in both Canada and the U.S. I want to start by reading something that was in the Globe and Mail this past summer, which I suspect had a lot of people scratching their heads about how green really is green. Here's the quote. Oregon-based CNW Marketing Research, Inc. has conducted the world's most comprehensive analysis of the life cycle energy requirements of more than 100 makes and models of cars and trucks. The company expresses energy requirement as the dollar cost of energy for every mile across a vehicle's anticipated years of use, U.S. dollars per lifetime mile. Thus, it reports the lifetime energy requirement of a Hummer as $1.90 a mile, the lifetime energy requirement of a hybrid Prius as $2.86 a mile. Now, before we discuss whether a Hummer is actually greener than a Prius, Heather, you're going to start by telling us what's a life cycle analysis? Well, a life cycle analysis examines the environmental implications of a product throughout its entire life cycle from raw material extraction through production, use, and end of life of the product. And conceptually, at least, it would include all of the inputs, say all the resources, as well as the, all the outputs, which would be the discharges or emissions to the environment throughout the entire set of activities associated with the pr so, product. obviously more complicated than how many miles to the gallon or how many kilometers to the liter. Considerably. Considerably. Okay, Lester, how many factors do you have to consider uh, to do a proper life cycle analysis of a product? <clears throat> well, you have to consider everything that uh, Professor McLean just said, but in some research that uh, we did uh, some years ago, what we found was that uh, about 85 to 90 percent of the life cycle emissions and resource use uh, for a vehicle came from the amount of fuel that it burned. And so this analysis that uh, says that the Hummer is a, a cleaner car, a greener car than the Prius, uh, I think is just nonsense. Heidi, can I get your take on that? Yeah, Professor Lave and, uh, um, uh, has just uh, put his finger on it. It really depends on the assumptions that are made about the life of the car and the use pattern of the cars. And if I remember the study correctly, they assumed that Hummers, like other trucks, were going to live longer, be used more intensively, etc., and that the Prius was going to be underutilized and um, scrapped much earlier than it would otherwise. Usman, do you think the study's valid? No, I don't, I don't think it's valid at all. Got I a mean, lot of attention when it came out. Oh, certainly, but I mean, I, I think it was more a political tool than a, uh, than a uh, scientific study. I mean, there's, there's a protocol for undertaking these types of studies that it's been uh, ratified by the International Standard uh, uh, Organization for Standards. It's called the ISO 14000 uh, uh, protocol. And really, studies need to have all of their assumptions stated up front. The sources of information and data that you use need to be vetted. Uh, they need to be openly uh, published. And uh, once the study is undertaken, it needs to go to a peer review and, and be vetted by a, uh, a group of third-party experts that look at it and, and make sure that what you said you did, you did. Uh, the assumptions that you made, you followed. And the information that you used is verifiable. Okay, let me follow up with Clarissa. I mean, this study apparently went into the materials used, the transportation involved, getting it from factory to dealership, driving habits of people who bought Hummers versus Priuses, that kind of thing. Can something that looks, can a study that looks that extensively into an issue still be dead flat wrong at the end of the day? It can be because it's all based on a person's use of a vehicle, and that varies person to person. They've uh, applied a series of assumptions based on a snapshot situation. And if you change one assumption, the results can change dramatically. So assumptions are like ingredients in a recipe. Change one ingredient and the recipe changes and, and, and another thing is sensitivity analysis, which is what Clarissa is, is referring to, which is when you do the study, you have to show how robust it is under a set of different assumptions. And look how sensitive the, uh, the results are 
based on the inputs that you put in and the assumptions that you've made. Okay, None of that was done. Let's not pick on the, the Hummer versus the Prius thing. Give it, <laughs> Clarissa, give us another example of something where we think A is clearly greener than B, and yet maybe it isn't. Diapers, maybe? Well, diapers is a great example. I'm in the midst of them right now. Uh, there was a study that came out by a company, I, I won't name them, that make disposable diapers. And they said that the disposable diaper was better than the cotton diaper. When I looked at some of the assumptions, they were it was based on you know washing cotton diapers every day in hot water, rinsing in hot, putting them in the dryer. That's not necessarily how cotton diaper usage is done. It can, it can radically be different. Uh, you can do it much more efficiently. So in that case, I would say, that the life cycle assessment was completely wrong. I would also question, you know, the first thing you have to do is say, who's funding this life cycle assessment? Mm -hmm. Whose interest is at play here? Who benefits from the results of the output? We don't know if Hummer funded the study in question that we started on the program with, but... No, we don't know, but, you know, sometimes you have to question, well, who are the consultants that are doing it and who are their other clients? Sure. And these are things that have to be, these are questions that have to be asked.